Hello friends, I want to talk to you about the Apple tax. I want to talk to you about the Apple tax because I found this article debunking the myth of the Apple tax. Now, here's, here's the problem with this. There is no debunking the myth of the Apple tax because the Apple tax is not a myth. And uh, my light's flickering a little bit. Give me just a second to fix it. There we go. <clears throat> the Apple tax is not a myth. What is going on here is this argument, basically this article makes the argument that, you know, if you compare it to Samsung or Microsoft Surfaces, then it's not an Apple tax. It, it, they're doing the same thing. But here's the problem. These people don't understand what the Apple tax is. The Apple tax means that you're paying a lot more money for something that you can get roughly equivalent functionality for much more cheaply if you don't buy from Apple. Now, what they're doing when they go and they compare iPhone to Samsung Galaxy, iPad to Samsung Galaxy Tab, MacBook Air to Microsoft Surface. Oh, wait a minute. Do you notice that there's there's no Mac like Mac Pro, iMac, MacBook. There's only MacBook Air. No MacBook Pro, none of that. So why? Why why is that missing? Hmm, I wonder. See, here's the thing. My devices look let me, let me see if I can find it. Oh, it's in my pocket. Look, this is an LG Stylo X. It's, it's a phone. It's a nice phone. It, it's great. Storage does everything that I'd ever want a phone to do. $150. This Samsung Galaxy S21 whatever. I wouldn't... Let's see. Oh, look. It's got uh, European units. Um, oh, the Galaxy S21 is 949 pounds. Okay, this is 150 U.S. dollars. I don't know, maybe it was 180. I don't remember. The point is, okay, you're you're paying a massive amount of money for a Galaxy S21, but what do you get for that? Well, you don't get much more than what this has. Look, it's got a wide camera, a regular camera, a depth sensor camera, you know, and this is a cheap phone. The point is, these premium products cost a premium price, but they don't really give you much in the way of premium features. You don't really miss out much if you buy a cheaper phone or a cheaper tablet. You can get devices that, while they're not 100% comparable, they're certainly close enough, but they cost a tiny fraction of the price. Now, that's mobile devices. I'm not going to dignify the MacBook Air versus Microsoft Surface with any kind of actual anything. Um, both suck. Now, I, I don't care about having a laptop that's 0.1 inch thinner. It doesn't matter to me. I don't need it. I never need it. The Surface's keyboard is trash. It, it's just not a fair comparison anyway. But you're an idiot if you buy either one. So we'll just move on from that. I want to show you where the Apple tax is undeniable. And I'm going to give you justification. And there will be no further argument after this that there is indeed a premium that you pay for Apple products. You are paying more, and this is ignoring all of the problems with repairability. Completely ignoring that. Completely ignoring the fact that the SSD and the RAM and the CPU, everything that they can is soldered directly to the motherboard, so it's not upgradable either. So, but we'll get to that. <clears throat> so, value prop. Let's just go through this. 16-inch MacBook Pro. Now, this is the cheaper one. They have a more expensive one, but I'm starting with the cheaper MacBook Pro. Um, let's look at what it has. Now, notice that they don't give you the exact model number of the processor, although we can use these numbers to figure it out. Um, and I'm not going to even bother, and I'll show you why. So, we have a, a Core i9, 2.3 gigahertz core, ninth gen. The biggest things are Core i9 laptop processor, ninth generation, 16 gigs of RAM, AMD Radeon Pro 5500M with four gigabytes of memory, a terabyte solid state drive, a 16 inch Retina display. Now that's the one thing that in PCs you're generally not going to find, but I'll explain why I don't think that matters. Four Thunderbolt 3 ports, which again, whoop-de-doo, 
touch bar, mm, garbage, don't care, backlit magic keyboard. Backlit keyboards are pretty standard on laptops that are anywhere above like 700. You're basically getting a backlit keyboard by default. So this, look at this, this is the price before taxes, shipping, trade-in, whatever. $27.99, so your value proposition from Apple, Core i9, 9th gen, 16 gig, one terabyte, and a Razer Pro 5500M, four gig. Those are the big features, the big uh, specs. Now, I did some digging on Newegg Business. Newegg doesn't sell this, but one of their third-party vendors does. I could buy this right now. This is a Dell G7. Now, it's, a, it's a slightly older model, but not by much. Core i9, 10th gen, not 9th, 10th. See, Apple's two generations behind on the Intel Silicon, probably partly because they're moving to their own Silicon, but we'll leave that out of the discussion for now. Apple Silicon is not as fast as promised. In benchmarks, it does not hold up to newer Intel chips or AMD chips in several different categories, um, including video encoding, but that's, again, not the point of this video. So, right away, let's look at the prices. 24.13.43. $27.99.00, so we're basically looking at $380-ish dollars, $380 more for the Mac. You can actually buy a cheap-ish PC laptop for $380, so $380 more for the Mac for an i9 that's a generation behind the Dell, a terabyte SSD, so they're even on that front, 32 gigs of RAM, so the Dell already, we have double the RAM in the Dell. Um, double the RAM and a GeForce RTX 270. Now that doesn't directly, if you look at this, it doesn't directly go with the AMD Radeon Pro. You, you can't look at those two and just be like, oh yeah, I can compare those directly. I pulled up a comparison for you. Uh, but we'll get to that too. Now let's look at the specs here, get a little more detail. So i9, 10th gen, 32 gig RAM, terabyte solid state, um, it does have a 1080p LCD screen. I feel like in laptops, you don't need more than 1080p. Um, once you start getting the resolution higher than that, things become squinty or you have to turn on scaling and scaling doesn't always play very nice. So 1080p, that, that's fine. The retina display thing is, um, I don't see the value in it, honestly. Um, it, it seems like it just it really just adds more to the resource usage of the system without really adding much in the way of value. So, so um, wireless, I don't really care. Backlit keyboard. Oh, God, it comes with a touchpad. That's amazing. So <clears throat> just looking at this, all right, the biggest differences between these two machines seems to be, the most notable ones seem to be 10 processor, 32 gigs of RAM, and a GeForce RTX 2070. Those are the big specs that are not the same. So this is our Core i9 10th gen. I should turn off all these notifications before I start in on this stuff. Um, 10th gen. Now, I don't know exactly what um, i9 that MacBook has, and I could look it up. And if I do some digging here, I bet you I can find the highest end i9 mobile, uh, there it was, HK, um, 14941, is that the one? Let's find out. It's eight cores, it's 2.4, oh, so this one actually is the more expensive one you can pay 200 extra dollars for. So it's not the HK, let's go back and find the just the H. It must be just the H. Okay, now let's find the i9 10. Um, what was it? 10 There it is. All right. So comparing the processors, this is our max most likely processor. Um, the numbers add up. This is the max processor. This is the PC's processor. Look down here. The Mac 14027, and I know that this is a generic benchmark and depends on the load and all that, but the point is it's a newer Intel processor um, and the benchmarks don't lie. The 14027 is the combined rating, 2529 is single thread. So you get 15878 and 20.
36. That is significantly more, both in the combined rating and the single thread rating, compared to the Mac. Okay, so the CPU is a pretty clear win on, on the value front. And 32 gigs of RAM instead of 16, also a clear win on the value front. Uh, the two SSDs probably are both PCI Express uh, X4. There's probably not much of a difference there to care about. Now here's the other big one. GeForce RTX 2070 Mobile versus AMD Radeon Pro 5500M. 5500 this is the Mac. This is the PC. Scroll down and just all you need to know is, I don't know anything about this particular website, but they've got GPU ratings here. And place in our rating, lower is better, number one is first place. 80th place for the PC, 189th place for the Mac. And scroll down, oh, the PC's GPU is actually an older design and it's still faster. There's more cores, there is a higher boost clock, a lot more trans, good god, that's a lot of transistors. Now there is a high ADP, so the PC will chew through battery faster when the GPU is being used, especially if it's being used heavily. Uh, but the thing is, it's a much higher performing GPU, um, significantly so. So we're looking at a computer here that has a noticeably faster processor. I'm doing a little math in my head. The single core rating is 300 out of like 2300. Is it, It's like, um, I don't know, but it's over 10% boost, I believe, in... Um, processor speed. So a faster processor, double the RAM, and a GPU that is much faster for 241343 versus 2799. So we're when we're talking about this Apple tax thing, that's what you're facing. You're paying an extra $380 for half the RAM a weaker CPU that's two generations behind instead of one, and a GPU that is slower. Um, and what do you get instead? Well, you get the Retina display and Thunderbolt ports, Thunderbolt 3 ports, which is supposedly USB-C as well. Do you need Thunderbolt ports? I, honestly, outside of audio, I have seen almost nothing that actually makes use of Thunderbolt ports. Uh, and maybe, you know, using them as display adapter. They don't see much in the way of Thunderbolt hardware, frankly. So the value proposition for that is kind of minimal. And I don't think this has Thunderbolt. It doesn't mention it, at least. Um, so I'm not, I'm not concerned about that, though. This computer, <laughs> this computer has a number pad, I think, maybe? I can't tell. No, maybe it doesn't have a number pad, but, you know, the picture's not great, so I can't really tell. Um... Maybe they have a... No, I don't know. But I don't care. I don't care because the bottom line is if I get this computer, I'm getting better everything. I'm getting faster storage. You know, I'm getting a better processor. I didn't. I said faster storage. That's wrong. I'm getting double the RAM. I'm getting faster CPU. I'm getting a faster GPU. And when you're running programs and literally everything is fast or you have more of... What do you think the difference is going to be? It's going to be better. It's going to run faster. So I wonder why the MacBook Pro wasn't looked at in this debunking the Apple tax myth. Um, the, phone, the phone is a no-brainer. And there's a Samsung tax, too. See, this is the thing. Apple and Samsung are premium brands. They offer premium offerings. They are brands that cater to people who have more money than cents. They are brands that you buy because they're brands, they're fancy. Or because you're crazy and you think that you want to be a filmmaker with your iPhone. Um, because woo do doo 4K 10-bit in the brand new I iPhone. And, um, you know, honestly, the camera that I'm shooting this on, I got used for the same price as a brand new top-end iPhone. And it's massively better than an iPhone will ever be at, you know, that whole filmmaking thing. Um, I've got a GH5S right there. You buy stuff that's suited for the purpose. You don't buy an iPhone 12 or whatever just because you want to make films on it. it that, that's nuts. So, yeah, no. It, there are plenty of situations in the phone world where if you pay less, you might not get as good of a camera. 
and you might get a little bit less, um, you know, might, might have slightly slower processor cores or slightly less um, internal storage, but you wouldn't really notice the difference anyway or you don't care. Um, it, it really is a situation where they're catering to people who have a metric ton of money and thus don't care about whether there's a Samsung or Apple tax. And especially with Apple, they are selling a brand as well. This is an identity, a status symbol, um, arguably even a lifestyle to some extent. This is, when you buy an Apple product, you are not just buying a computer to be used as a tool. You're buying something to sit in a coffee shop and broadcast to everyone, I have status. I could afford this Cadillac of a laptop and please steal it from me. Anyway, the bottom line is that this is definitive proof, and I've done this for over a decade now, gone in, looked at Apple products, looked at PC products, find the most comparable stuff that I could and see what the price was. You can't match up exactly because some of what Apple does is different from what's available in the PC market. We have a computer where everything except for the screen and Thunderbolt ports are either equal in the case of the hard drive capacity, the SSD, or super Faster CPU, faster GPU, double the RAM. And then we have completely ignored so far the fact that if you buy this Dell laptop, even though it's not as sexy thin as the MacBook Pro is, you buy this Dell laptop and oh, say you want a 2 terabyte NVMe SSD in the future, you just buy the SSD. You don't have to buy a whole new computer. Every soldered to a Mac. Now, granted, the Intel chips probably soldered to the PC, but you want more RAM? You go buy more RAM and put it in there. You want a bigger hard drive SSD, whatever? You buy a bigger one and put it in there. I actually think the Dell also has an unused SATA hard drive area, um, so you could get a SATA drive and have two of them if you wanted to, I think. Um, and, you know, stuff like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth is pretty much standard across the board anyway. Um, everything has that. So where's the value here? Where is, where is the 380 extra dollars worth of value? The only way that the Apple wins in your mind is if the Retina display and or the Thunderbolt ports are so much more valuable to you than double the RAM, faster CPU, faster GPU, that you would pay $380 for an objectively inferior computer to have the high resolution and Thunderbolt. That's it. And you know what? If you're screwed, you're an audio guy that has to have a Thunderbolt interface. If, if that's what you're stuck with, you must get Thunderbolt. Maybe you don't buy this Dell. You know, maybe, maybe that's just what you're stuck with. But you're probably not. If you're watching this, you're probably not that guy. Anyway, the Apple Tax Debunk by, uh, let's see, who the Mac O'Clock, uh, yeah, figures it'd be a Mac thing, on Medium, this is a Medium thing, I hate Medium, by, Ru I can't pronounce this name, why am I even trying? You can see it on the screen here, I'll even zoom in, so you can go dig it up and laugh at it for yourself. And this is from this year, too. Like, this is not some old article, this, this is from this year. It's hilariously bad. It, it's so funny how these people they'll write this kind of garbage and just I think honestly what I've come to realize is that if people make a bad purchasing decision they will retroactively attempt to find evidence to justify their bad decision and I feel like Apple people who find out about the Apple tax find out that PCs exist cost less that are better much better that they feel like they've made a mistake and the cognitive really starts to kick in there. It's like you made a mistake, you have to resolve this error in judgment because you couldn't possibly have made an error. Surely that it's not an error and you explain to the world why by omitting the MacBook Pro and the MacBook from your little article here, for example. So yeah, Apple tax myth debunk, debunked. This could get interesting. I hope that you have learned something. If this has been helpful to you, please check the description of this video. You'll find all kinds of information, ways that you can support me, other video hosting sites that I kind of sort of post videos to, um, ways to contact me if you have questions or
or want to follow up, please feel free to leave a comment. Leave one of these. If, um, if you really hate me, what I'd like for you to do is click dislike twice so that you can make sure that you, you double dislike it. That way we can be sure that your dislike registers with more impact. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day. And I hope that this has been helpful. I hate ending videos. Take care.